<laughs> so you no longer own a car, a truck. You you own two motorcycles. What's this? That is my car. This is my car. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is it. I, I haven't owned a car in a while. So Mike, if I asked you, what is the five most memorable places that you have been on this ruckus, what would you say? Um, Big Bend National Park, Texas, Cape Spear, Newfoundland, um, Inuvik, Northwest Territories, um, Prudhoe Bay, and... I'm going to go with uh, Bahia de Los Angeles. And that's in Mexico? Yeah, it's in Mexico. <laughs> so you went to Newfoundland on this bike. What? Yep. Uh, can you tell us any any stories or remembrances from that trip? I had to start avoiding people at the end of the day because then they'd want to invite me over to the <laughs> kitchen for, for like, just to hang out and like have a place to camp next to their horses and want to drink some, drink some tea. And some like, screech. Oh, yeah. You, you, know, you got you to drink some screech when you're in, in town. Yeah, and drink, eat some purity crackers and do the rest of all the Newfoundland things. say you went cod fishing up there with some cod fishermen yeah well they were recreationalists but yeah it was in trinity and just stopped in on a pouring rainy morning to the little community house for a cup of coffee and you know everybody's hanging out on the straight long table just sitting there talking to each other and i started you know working up a yarn with a couple locals and three hours later he said oh well, if you need a place to stay you stay in me place and and if you want to go jigging for cod in the morning we go down to the river we got some fish and i was like okay so we took the river went out to the little harbor there and took the harbor out and went out in this bay where, you know, it was maybe 200 feet deep or so. We just left the line down on the old wooden sort of spinner that you see at all the little places and big old hook and then got to the bottom and then brought it up a little bit and just started pulling and caught a couple, uh, what are they called, the um, sculpin, you know, caught a couple sculpin through those back and then eventually caught, you know, maybe three or four cod and put them in the boat and had breakfast, cod and some potatoes. Oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. Good that's place to stop for a cup of coffee. <laughs> total Newfoundland. I've been a Newfoundland guys, that's why I'm asking questions about it. I gotta go back. So, Mike, how many miles have you traveled on that ruckus right there? Oh, this one right here. Uh, this one has, I got over 200 miles on it, and it's got 81,182 miles. 81,000 miles. Uh, a lot of miles on a Honda 50, but yeah. it's still the original motor, and it's still running strong. So, 
As far as you know, is that some kind of record on a ruckus? Um, I met, uh, there's a ruckus forum, and there's a guy on there that has another ruckus, but he doesn't have that much that many miles on it. There's other people that have other ones with that many miles that are rebuilt, or maybe three motors later, they just keep replacing the motor. Yeah. But I trust this motor, and I know it runs well, and I keep it adjusted and tuned. And last time I had it part at 40,000 miles, it looked brand new inside. There wasn't even any buildup of, you know, oil or deposits or sediment in the engine, so. Yeah. Mike, tell us about some of the places you've been. Um, well, today we went to Little River Canyon. That was pretty good. Um, but in the past, I've been all over, so all over the country, pretty much as far farthest <clears throat> motorable road east, the farthest motorable road south, the farthest motorable road north, and the farthest motorable motorable road on the contiguous U.S. West at Anger Point. So I've been north, south, east, and west on the continent. You do that on purpose, or just kind of worked out that way? Yeah. <laughs> How about your trip to now you say you've been to the f farthest just go go around the clock again. Tell us these places. Cape, <clears throat> Cape Spear, Newfoundland, um, Key West, Florida, uh, the end of Cabo, down in the end of uh, Baja, all the way up in Alaska, so going up to Prudhoe Bay on the Hall Road, and then all the way up to Inuvik, all the way up in the Northwest Territories. Although now the road's open to Tuk Tuk Tuk, but it wasn't when I went through there. It was still being built. Um, oh, well, it was an ice road, but now it's officially open, so you can go farther. But Oh, you got your reason to go back. I got to go back. <laughs> I don't need a reason. I just go back there just to go back there. There's nothing like riding into your shadow, you know, like in riding south into your shadow. It's sort of a weird thing. So. Well, we noticed that your Newfoundland sticker on your windshield is wearing out, so you got to go back and get another one. Got to get another one. They don't make them in China like they used to for the Newfoundland stickers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or wherever they make a sticker at. What's down, die good, next time. Goodbye, fare you well. Goodbye, fare you well. We're homeward bound this very day. Hurrah, me boys, we're homeward bound. Goodbye, fare you well. Goodbye, fare you well. Give us a memorable road story just off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. Memorable road story. Ruckus. I'm trying to think. Okay, how did I wind up living in Alabama? If it wasn't for my ruckus scooter, I wouldn't live in a tiny house in Alabama, probably. Yeah. So I was traveling around on my ruckus, and I was up in Alaska, and I met a guy in a Lowe's parking lot who couldn't believe I actually rode it all the way there from Virginia. And eventually he told me about his place in Washington, said if I want to take a shower when I finally needed one in Washington, I could take one at his place. I said, okay, great. 
So I stopped there on my way south, took a shower, and he introduced me to his friends that lived in Alabama just by virtue of saying, oh, are you traveling through the south later? Well, you should meet my friends in Alabama. And so I did and was like, man, these are great people. And uh, so now I wind up, you know, eventually moving in and living here down in Alabama and built my little house out of a bunch of pallets and reclaimed stuff. And so if, if it hadn't been for my scooter in a Lowe's parking lot and a bunch of bolts that rattled off of the bike I had to replace, I wouldn't live where I live and I wouldn't be as happy as I am. <laughs> yeah, that's so great. There's a scooter story. Tell us about your trip to the Arctic Circle and the into the Arctic Ocean. Um, well, the first time I went, I decided it would be a good idea to go ride from the bottom of America to the top of America on a 50 because, you know, why not? You don't, you don't need <laughs> once. Anybody can do it on a Beamer. So I took off from Key West and went all the way up to Prudhoe Bay on this little ruckus right here. And back then, I didn't really know what was going to break. And I hit Colorado, and my variator exploded. And by the time I made it all the way up to the Arctic and Prudhoe Bay, I'd already solved all the things that were going to break and had all my butt switches aligned and felt like I could do and conquer anything. And even if the bike broke down, I'd just keep walking. And I ran to a guy walking in the Arctic with a push in a cart. And so I gave him a bunch of granola bars and stuff. But yeah, going to the Arctic the first time in 2014 was just a real journey and I'm just enamored by the distance in the space it's you know 400 miles 500 miles north of fair the nearest town until you get all the way up to Prudhoe Bay I mean the Arctic's closer but getting all the way up there is a long way to go and especially when you're going 25 or 30 miles an hour all day long with these giant trucks passing you at 70 on this gravel road oh yeah rocks and snow and sludge and so it's just a really challenging place and I think if I do it again um, I'd probably do the Dempster because the Dempster is really pretty, goes through a national park, and there's a beautiful native village there at the end of the road instead of like an oil camp where you freeze your butt off. Is there bears up there? There are black bears. You're getting farther north. When you get up to the Brooks Range and that sort of area, there's plenty of brown bear. Um, and then, yeah, when you get all the way north up to Prudhoe Bay and up there on the north slope, there's legit ar Arctic, you know, um, polar like bears. Polar bears? So you'll see marks in camp, you know, at Prudhoe Bay. They you know, are really strict about where you can camp. There's musk ox big furry musk ox and arctic fox and uh, wolves and all kinds of i've seen caribou you know caribou run all crazy across the road they'll run one way and then they'll run at you and then they'll run that way and it's just unpredictable <laughs> Moose. what did you, how difficult was it to get gas like the further north you got so once you get to Coldfoot, that's the last gas station you got until you get to prudhoe bay and it's uh 200 plus miles so um yeah the ruckus only carries about 100 miles of gas so i had all these fuel bottles and it's a rough road and it was snowy and terrible and I came off the Brooks Range and I'm coming down this hill and there's this work zone and I stop and I'm talking to this road worker in the middle of nowhere in the Brooks Range. One dude standing out there with a pole in the middle of a snowstorm with a stop sign. I'm like, this man has a really hard job, right? So I talked to this guy for a while and all these cars build up and then eventually these trucks come. And I said, how long is this work zone? He says, oh, it's 15 miles. And I was like, how fast does that guy go? And he goes, well, he goes about 50. And I'm like, there's no way I can go 15 miles at 50 miles an hour. He's like, well, we're, we'll put you in the back. I, I go, okay. He goes, well, actually, we, we always put the motorcycles in the front because all the dirt and the mud and the rocks. So we'll just go your speed, and everybody will just have to go 25 or 30. I'm like, okay. So he puts me in, in the other front. words, everyone's going to hate you. Everyone's going to hate me. <laughs> so, like, if they don't hate me already, about five minutes later, all my fuel bottles strapped on the front rack fall off the bike. So I have to stop and pull and pick them all up. So everybody goes around me. So now I'm behind everybody and so by the time I get to the end of this 15 mile work zone like the trucks waiting all the cars are waiting to go like the workers are like where's this guy on the scooter where did he do you know and 
But uh, yeah, rough day. It was a long day, a lot of miles, and I didn't know if I'd have enough gas, you know, to make it all the way there. Um, I knew I had enough, but I knew I couldn't turn back, so I knew I had to keep going because I couldn't turn around. There was nowhere else to fuel up after a certain point on the Brooks Range. You, you had to keep going. You couldn't back up. <laughs> it's it's li literally the point of no return. Right. Yeah. It was it was the halfway point, and I knew like at this point if I if I want to go back that way, I'm going to have to beg for gas from somebody's truck or somebody, or ask for a trucker to give me a lift or something. And by the time I reached the Prudhoe Bay, I said, I am not riding this bike back. I'm going to get a truck tomorrow. I'm going to ride back. I'm going to get a hotel room and I'm going to be happy as a clam in Fairbanks. And I'm just going to get a spa treatment and a shower. Cause you know, I was just miserably cold. The next morning I woke up totally different mood. And I was like, I can't wait to ride this bike all the way to Mexico. Like it was just one night's sleep and a really hard day really makes a difference if you have a full belly and a you know sunny skies the next day after a hard day. So Absolutely. Yeah.